Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to create our first page, our first post. I showed you briefly in the last tutorial, but this one will be a little bit more in depth about managing the content on your site. So, put your username and password in, hit login. Head to your blog and go to dashboard. Dashboard is the back end where every single tiny thing that goes on in the website. It might be comment from other people, it might be approving them, it might be adding new posts, new pages, categorizing new pages, and uh, really building a full-on proper website. Okay? If you've never done a website before, it's not scary because WordPress makes it so simple. You never ever see a piece of code. Ten years ago, I was coding raw HTML to make my first website about seaweeds and it took forever to learn how to, what to do and to basically implement it into a website which looked good and presented decent information. Now it's all through this and the theming is all done automatically, templating is all done automatically. So all you have to do is put your information in, make sure that you spelt it right and make sure you've organised it in a logical fashion. Now most blogs have search boxes and stuff but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use a good structure. It's exactly the same as if you were to write a large essay a piece of work which is subdivided into subheadings. Subheadings in this case would probably be pages or posts, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the difference between post and a page. So if we go back to the website and we just have a quick look at the blog, you see that there's these here which appear on the front page are uh, Posts and posts are for a little tidbit of information that you regularly update. If you want to change that and just use static pieces of information, which probably might be a bit better for some of the more larger parts of the website. For example, if you're working on how dynamic of query, describing the background history of the record, and then maybe you have another page talking about the uh, type of technology used, and another one you might have case studies or examples. And those will be pages. And pages live in this black bar here. And you can see at the moment we've just got two pages. We've got about, which it tells you this is an example of a page. We've got a home. And home at the moment is not a page. It's just a link of the recent post that you put on. Now for most of my website, I keep very static information as pages around the top. Maybe three or four. And then just that I update a lot, I would use post and I would let the system show the most recent post on the front page. So if we go back to the dashboard, you see post, click on that, we've already edited the hello world one, but also down here you've got pages. So let's click on pages and you see that about is in there. So we'll change this to exactly the same as before. and then just click update. We go back to the website about you see it's already automatically updated. This is how easy it is to create a website. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back onto the left hand side bar and click add new and we're going to give it a new title Now, if you were to close your browser down right now, you would lose this. So it's very important that you either click Save Draft or Publish. If you click Save Draft, you get a confirmation here as well. You can preview the page before it gets published. At the moment, if you were to refresh it out, it's not on the website. If you click Publish, that picture on. You can see there's a public date, publish date there. We'll go here again, we'll just click Refresh. And you see immediately background appears here. Click on it and it goes in. So if you're not ready to publish that kind of information, you can always save it as a draft. But it's very important before you close the browser that you update or save. Alright? If you publish and you want to unpublish something, 
see how it says date is published just click edit and you can just put draft and take it off the website and it will uh, take it away again alright but it's very very important that you save draft or publish in there now it might be better for some of you to work with a normal file a word document and copy and paste information in to WordPress later on when it start getting ready and then you can start editing it but always remember to press publish or save draft or you will lose the information that you just made okay so we'll just add a couple more pages to show you what we can do some structure We go back to the web there. You see that we've now got several pages, and we've got a few little posts going on. Okay, you can also leave comments. Other people can leave comments on your website if you enable it. You see, that we've got lots of different options that we can change. So we go back to the dashboard. You see that there's an awful lot of that we can mess about with. But I'll go through some of the more common stuff later. But remember there's a vast amount of information on the WordPress website that tells you how to use practically every single thing that you could ever think about in here. Now, one final thing to remember is you've got a hundred megabytes of storage space for your website. That includes the text, the video, movies, pictures, whatever you want to put on to the website. Okay. So I'm going to stop there and we'll come back in a minute and we'll go back over in the next one uploading images or a movie or a sound file it's so easy it's going to make you laugh